I say on the page, my dignity doesn't depend on the length of my skirt. I ask people to send in photos of their legs, women's legs, men's legs, children's legs, in trousers, in short skirts or in long skirts, the length doesn't matter. I was hoping to get all different skirt lengths, including long ones worn by women who wear headscarves. We had whole families who sent us their legs, the sister, the brother, the father and the sister wore hijab. We received 50 or even 100 photos every day. In less than a week, we had 15,000 people sign up. There are all kinds of people, religious people, agnostics, everyone. That was the whole point. We're all opposed to this daily aggression that's based on archaic and fanatic values. There was tons of support for the page. But then someone hacked the page and shut down the account. The first thing they did was take down the photos of legs. That's why I decided to show my legs for this interview. If some people don't want to see them, tough. My legs are alive. They help me move forward through the world. And I'm not just showing my legs today. I'm showing my face too. The people who hacked our page are cowards who hide behind computers and screen names. But I want them to see my face. My name is Sophia Jama. Our observer at Mohammed lives in Katif in Saudi Arabia, and he was there when a suicide bomber blew himself up at a Shiite mosque. Now, Katif has the highest concentration of Shiites in predominantly Sunni Saudi Arabia. Even though the Islamic State group eventually claimed responsibility for the attack, the first people locals blamed were the Saudi authorities. I rushed to the mosque with some friends. It was complete chaos dead people and wounded people all over the place. No one would ever have imagined a terrorist attack in this little village outside the city. There were bodies everywhere. Wounded people were trying to crawl their way out of the mosque. It was horrible. Later, there were funerals. People came from Katif, but from other parts of Saudi Arabia too. Even from other countries in the Gulf. What's really shocking is the kind of speech that you hear from some Saudi commentators and intellectuals, preaching hatred of Shiites, calling them unbelievers. You hear it on TV, in the papers, on social networks, and the authorities do nothing about it. During the funerals, people held up banners denouncing sectarianism and discrimination. I hope this attack will be the last. We don't want to see any more sectarian terrorism. What I'm calling for, what everyone in Katif wants, is for the Saudi authorities to pass a law criminalizing speech that stirs up sectarian hatred. And now for some more reports and images sent in by our observers this week. An artillery piece in Syria, no surprise given the war that's going on there. But this gun was built in Nazi Germany. It dates back to the 1930s, but today it's in the hands of a jihadist group fighting in Idlib province. Military experts suspect such weapons were looted from government arms depots. Despite its age, the equipment seems to be in full working order, still killing 80 years after it was manufactured. Mexican doctors taking naps, not very reassuring. It is, though, a staged protest against people who criticize doctors for being overpaid and then daring to sleep on the job. So these doctors got together to remind their fellow citizens how hard they work, sometimes pulling shifts that are 24 hours long. Yes, they say, we sleep on the job because we have no choice. Our observer Karen Sadi is a school principal in Sana'a, the capital of Yemen. Her school is closed because there's a war going on, but she's still taking kids in, teaching them in her own home. She takes in the poorest kids, the ones who have no place else to go, and keeps them busy with drawing and poetry writing. The horrors they see on the streets around them are only too evident. Finally today, a reminder not to trust everything you see online. As demonstrations continue in Burundi against the current president, the biggest private media have been closed down. People's only source of independent news is the internet. 
but we have spotted lots of fake images in circulation. This one supposedly shows a recent torture scene in the country, but in fact it's an old photo from Nigeria published in a report by Amnesty International. A reminder to check that something is true before you pass it on.